That's not amazing sound. Let's go to accident and emergency and see how our patient's getting along. Six-year-old Benjamin is in hospital with 10 fingers, but only nine fingertips. He was rushing to get out of the car when he accidentally closed the door in his hand and chopped the top of his finger off. Having been examined by Dr. Charlotte Defty, Benjamin gets gowned up and the surgical team prepare to operate. First things first though, Benjamin's having a general anaesthetic to send him to sleep. Now nobody's ever got to 20, can you count and see if you can get to 20 for me? <gasps> One, two, three. A general anaesthetic is a combination of drugs which, when they enter your body, put you into a temporary state of unconsciousness, keep you still and reduce the body's normal reactions to pain. Twelve. Benjamin's still counting, but will he make it to 20 before the anaesthetic kicks in? Sixty. I don't think so. But now he's fast asleep, Dr Charlotte can get started. Check out those specs. They might look weird, but they will magnify Benjamin's finger, making it look three and a half times bigger and easier for Dr. Charlotte to work on. Get ready for some fiddly finger work. First, Dr. Charlotte has to nibble away at the bone. Only when it's lower than the level of the flesh can the soft tissue be closed together. Then it's time for some stitches. Finger fixed and dressing on. The operation's all done. Everything went very smoothly. He'll be able to go home later today, as soon as he recovers from the general anaesthetic. Two hours later, Benjamin's awake, looking happy. And it's time for Dad to offer some more words of comfort. How's your finger now? Fine. You sure? Yeah. How do you know? Because it's not there. <laughs> yeah, you really do need to work on the TLC, Dad. Anyway, Dr Charlotte's here to check up on her patient and deliver some surprise news. He will have a name. Smash it! It'll just be a little bit shorter than it was before. Great result. He'll have a nail after all. And your fingertip will grow as well. It just won't quite be as big as the other fingertip on the other hand. Nice one, Doc. You've nailed it. Zand. <laughs> We've got loads of amazing body tricks to show you. Want to find out how to stop your friends from simply lifting a finger? We're going to show you how. Zand, I want you to put your hand on the table. And then I want you to leave that finger out. Leave that one out. If you can lift this penny without taking your hand off the table, just using that finger, mm. you can keep it. Ooh, yes. <laughs> now I'm going to paste the very light, normal penny on your finger. Easy. And we're going to do a big countdown. Ready? Three, Three two, one, one, lift. Come on. That is pathetic. <sighs> who thinks I'm pathetic? Now, who thinks they could do it? Well, let's see then, shall we? Time for everyone to have a go. OK, so in three, two, one, one lift. lift. Come on, guys, come on, lift it. Yeah, best go you can, best go you can. None of them can do it. So how does it work then? Your little finger and your first finger have their own muscles, but the middle ones have a muscle that controls all of them, so you can't move them separately. The muscle you need to move the penny with is busy keeping the middle finger bent, and it can't do two things at once, making the penny finger useless. <laughs> Did you know that half the bones in the human body are in our hands and feet? That's over 100 in total. Wow, you'd better look after those fingers and toes then. As far as I'm concerned, you're never too old to play games. And one of my favourites is the family classic, Hide and Seek. But when you play this game, you've got to be careful where you hide, because this game can be dangerous. Don't hide in the bins, Arndt. You'll get your foot stuck again. That would be rubbish. And don't hide behind the TV. You're going to get tangled in all the cables again. And don't hide in my laundry basket. I haven't done last week's washing yet. Well, Sand is clearly not in this room. I'm going to have to look somewhere else. Strange, because this room is normally his favourite place to hide. I knew you'd be in here, Sand. My finger! Sounds like an injury alert. So, what should you do if you trap and badly cut your finger? A. 
Use a clean cloth to apply pressure and stop the bleeding. B. Send in an army of ants to stitch it back up. Or C. Show your teacher and see if they freak out. Samira, what do you think the correct answer is? A, because if you do any of the other options, it wouldn't really help the person who has cut their finger. Yes! Samira, you've got it. And let's show you how. What should I do? What's the first thing to do? Get a bandage. Perfect, get a bandage. Stop so get me a bandage, Dr Chris. OK, so we stick this on, stop the bleeding. And you'll need to keep the pressure up until the bleeding stops and go to hospital. So who wants to have a go yourselves? Me! Now remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to find an adult. Stop the bleeding! So what do we need to do next? Take Case to hospital. You've got to get him to hospital. Nina, Nina, Nina. So that's it. Use a clean cloth to apply pressure and stop the bleeding. And if the fingertip has come off, put it in a clean bag, then put the bag on ice, tell an adult and take the patient and the fingertip to hospital. Or call 999. <laughs> Our next patient has an unusual habit. And because of that, she's ended up in accident and emergency. In the emergency department, nine-year-old Brody has arrived with her mum and... Ugh. My finger's got yellow pus in it. Yes, it has. It's where I've been biting my fingers. Like that. You must bite your fingers a lot, Brody. No, she does. Brody loves nibbling her nails. She'll nibble them anywhere, at home, on the bus, in school, even in her sleep. But why, Chris? Well, maybe her fingers taste of really yummy sausages or chocolate eclairs. How about bananas? That's ridiculous, Zond. Fingers can't turn into bananas. Look, let's forget the fingers. Let's just face it, she loves biting her nails and now the germs have got in and they're loving it. Ouch! We tried painting him with ice colour nail varnish, but that hadn't stopped it. No, not good. Not nice. <laughs> Why do you do it, Brody? I don't know. <laughs> I just like it. Here's Dr Shemi Ramlakan to examine that pussy appendage. Did you hurt it? Did you knock it? Or did... Not exactly, Doc. No, I think it's with me bite at my nails. Ah. OK, can I have a look? OK. Can you bend? Good. So that's what happens when you bite your nails, isn't it? <laughs> but it has a small abscess. We need to just drain that so that your finger feels better and that it doesn't spread and become um, more serious. Yep, that pus has got to come out. What we're going to have to do is put the, a, a needle in it again, yeah. basically, just to release that, OK? Uh-oh! Now it's time for action. How's Brody? Good. Don't bite your other hand, Brody. Some cold spray, just to make really sure cold. that it's... It like ice. Just to make sure it's really numb. Numb or not, Brody's not watching, but it's a very straightforward jab with a needle and... We're all done. See, he's done it. Finished. The pus has been released, Sand. It certainly has. What do you think, Brody? Can't you put a bandage on yeah, it? Yeah, a plaster on. That'll be enough to keep any nasties out, but will all this stop Brody from biting her nails? Hopefully I'll try and stop biting my nails. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> the hallway. It's the last room in the house you leave and the first you come back to. It's the part of the house that says, hey, I'm going out somewhere and hey, I'm back. But the hallway can also be a place of danger. <laughs> You could hit your head on one of the coat hooks. Ow! You could trip over the shoes that you've carelessly left lying around. Oh! Ow! Or you could forget to take your muddy shoes off and start walking upstairs, leaving footprints everywhere which will make your mother furious. Oh! If you look out for those dangers, you should be fine. Or Zond, can you get the door? Sure. Ah! My finger! Ooh, yep, I've got a minor injury. So what should you do if you hurt your finger? A, 
Hit a bone in all the other fingers to match them up. B. Tell your teacher you can't do any writing ever again. Or C. Apply something cold to the finger. The answer is C. Apply something cold and hold it there for no more than 10 minutes. Right, let's go to the park. It's the football. It's right in the hallway, just by my shoes, next to my... Yeah! Skateboard. So, if you hurt your finger, then put something cold on it for no more than 10 minutes or until the pain has gone away. In the accident and emergency department, the team are ready for their next case. Let's meet him. Six-year-old Rio has come to accident and emergency with a little problem on his hands. I've got a boy finger. Oh, yeah, that is a problem. And it's a bit strange. It does look pretty odd. So how on earth did that finger end up like that? Rio has lots of hobbies. That's him, tie boxing. But as well as the usual activities, he has another favourite pastime picking the skin around his nails. He picks in the morning, he picks in the evening. He even picks in the bathtub. But as he's been picking away, germs have crept in under the skin. That's those green things. <laughs> Lots of them, aren't there? Yep, and so his finger became infected and it swelled up. Ouch. It comes all white when you pick it a bit more. Time to stop picking at it, Rio. Let's get Professor Simon Carley in to get to the bottom of it. Follow this way. Let's follow the finger. Well, there goes the finger. Rio's just going to have to follow. And can I have a quick look? Do you bite your nails? Um, no, I pick them. You pick them? He certainly does. So you see all this yellow stuff? That's where it's got a little infection there, so it's going to make it sore. I think we can make that a little bit better for you by letting some of that out. Would that be all right? Cut it out, Doctor. That's a bit rude. No, really, cut it out. Let the pus out. Sounds drastic, but that pus needs removing. But first, let's give him some of this. Gas and air. It's made up of a mixture of oxygen and nitrous oxide. As you breathe it in, the gas numbs the pain receptors in your brain, meaning things hurt less and gives you a laugh along the way. Have you got the giggles? <laughs> <laughs> With Rio looking nice and relaxed, Professor Simon can get to work. Now, if you're squeamish, get ready to look away, because we're going to release the pus. And look away now. OK, here we go. And he's in. Oh! There goes some pus. OK, all clear. This might all seem a bit grim, but if Rio's abscess was left untreated, it could get worse and worse and could burst or even damage the bone. So what we've got there is all of that pus was trapped under the... And now it's out, Professor Simon removes that infected skin. So all that badness now, which was underneath here, is out. So all we do now is give that a clean, put a dressing on it, and it'll heal up really nicely. He said not yet, Reggie. But one rather large bandage later, and he's on his way home. And what's the moral of the story? I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, dear. Rio? Don't pick your nails or your fingers. Bingo. Bye-bye. Yep, bye. Time to go, Rio. We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Here's a good one to wind your mates up with. Who wants to learn a trick? Me! Me! OK, so I'm going to show Zond, and I want you guys to watch, and then you're going to do it. We're going to get Zond's on. So if you're cheering a football team, OK, really, really get your hands yeah! revving up like this, so quick as you can. Really do your hand hard like this, hard as you can, so your arm's starting to really ache. Keep going, Zondi. And when I say, what you're going to do is you're going to put your hand together like that and put your fingers apart. OK, ready? Three, two, one, go. I'm trying to stop my fingers touching, but I can't. Yeah, that's really weird. And what happens? So my, this finger's moving towards that one. Does it work for everybody? Let's have a go. Yo. 
The most important thing is to really wind your arm up as hard as you can. Then put your hands together, fingers apart, and watch what happens. One finger should start curling toward the other. What do these guys think? It works. Well, everyone seems to know how to make it work, but does anyone know why it works? When your hand is in the fist, it gets used to being in the fist, so when you do your fingers like that, it will curl back in because it's used to being like that. Simeon's bang on. Because you're winding your arm, you have to clench your fist really tight, and the muscles to those fingers get used to contracting. So when you stop and put your hands together, that finger wants to keep on squeezing. So you've got to make a tight fist for it to work. If you let your wrist go all loose, the fingers will fly off. <laughs> In accident and emergency, the team are ready to fix our next patient. Let's meet him. In Sheffield, seven-year-old Bailey is in accident and emergency with his mum and granddad. But what's going on with that swollen finger? I play football and I'm a goalkeeper and my granddad keeps all my finger bent back. Granddad did what? I can't even remember doing it. OK, granddad's in denial. Let's find out exactly what happened. Grandad and Bailey were playing football in the garden. Nice pants. Zond. The big man played a good attack, but Bailey played a good defence, and after a game of two halves, it was a draw. Oh, dear. Penalty time. Wow. Wild West style? Well, I thought it would add a bit more tension. Grandad stepped into town, ready to fire the winning goal, but Bailey was ready to stop the ball from going past. This town was only big enough for one of them. Nice voice, Chris. Thanks, Sand. Grandad took the penalty. He kicked the ball. Bailey jumped. He saved, but the ball bent his finger back. Ouch! And Grandad? <laughs> yes, what? Grandad did a runner. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Ready to examine the damaged digit is Dr. Bimal Kalzi. And what's been going on? I play football with my granddad and he kicked ball and my finger bent back. What happened after that? You don't want to know. Granddad did a runner. Granddad did a runner. <laughs> OK, sweetie, we're going to do a couple of funny exercises. Can you squeeze my fingers for me nice and tight? Don't let me go. Good down. grip. I think it's very unlikely that he's broken it. Granddad's relieved. We'll do an X-ray just to check because there is swelling there. He may at the most have had a little chip. So it's off to X-ray, where the medics will find out if there's any actual bone damage to Bailey's hand. Are things looking up for Bailey? OK, that's it, we're finished. So the doc now checks out the results. I wonder what Bailey and Grandad are up to. Surely they're not. Are you playing football again? This is how it happened the last time. So, busted. Bailey, that's your X-ray of your fingers, and I can see a very tiny chip. Grandad can't believe it. It's quite a simple break. We'll strap his fingers up to the next finger for support. He can wiggle his fingers gently and it'll heal very nicely on its own. Is that quite cool to look at? <laughs> yeah. So it's not too bad, just a small chip. And Bailey gets some strapping on the finger to give it support and help it heal. And what have the footballing fanatics learned from this? I think next time I'm going to win goal and he can kick the ball at me. <laughs> Time for one final game before they go. Uh, isn't Grandad meant to be in goal? Bye-bye. <laughs> Mind your finger. <laughs> Time to head back to accident and emergency to catch up with Jack and his sausage finger. Oh, I love sausages. Do you think he's got any ketchup? Let's see him get fixed. In Manchester, nine-year-old Jack is back in hospital waiting for an operation, and he's brought along a new friend. Now I don't have a sausage finger. I have Cyril. Hello, Cyril. Cyril is protecting Jack's cut finger, and this is how it was damaged. It was Jack's birthday, and he'd been given some money to buy a gift at the toy shop. When they arrived, Jack got out of the car, and in the excitement, he closed the car door on his finger. Ouch! Jack's operation is just moments away, so Cyril's days are numbered. Tell him, Dad. You're going to lose Cyril, aren't you? Never mind, Jack. Jack's on his way to have his operation. And there's no sign of nerves from our patient. In fact, he's cracking jokes. Not, not. Who's there? Dunna poo. <laughs> Dunna poo. Get it? <laughs> I think Cyril enjoyed that one, too. Time to prepare Jack for theatre. To make sure he doesn't feel any of the procedure, the doctor gives him some anaesthetic. 
Dr. Anne Markey, and Dr. Adiyinka Malajo are performing Jack's surgery. First, they thoroughly clean Jack's hand. The next step is to remove the nail so they can stitch up the finger. And remember, Jack can't feel a thing. Before he can start to stitch, Dr. Adiyinka takes out any little bits of dirt and broken nail stuck in the wound. Next, he stitches the cut before gluing back on the nail. And there's just enough time for a quick trim. With the nail in place, a protective gauze is put around the tip of Jack's finger to stop the bandage sticking to the wound. Time to wrap that sausage finger back up. Good. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. How was the op, Doc? That went really well. He's got another sausage finger for a couple of weeks till that gets better. On the recovery ward, Jack's wide awake. So, how was your snooze? I had like this dream when I, when I was in an action figure movie. An action figure movie? Cool. But are you missing Cyril? Since Cyril's gone, I have a new sausage finger. He's forgotten Cyril already. I know. And it looks like he's about to take that sausage finger home. Bye, Jack. Bye. Did you know it actually takes nine different muscles to control just one thumb? So you'd better look after those thumbs of yours. The car. Not only is it my pride and joy, but it's a perfect way of getting out and about and experiencing the thrill of the open road. But remember, long car journeys can be difficult, so it's best to be prepared. Are you ready, Zond? Certainly am. I've got some excellent reading material. I've got a little something to eat in case I get hungry. And I've got some water. Fair enough, Zond. But the car can also be a place of danger. You could choke on those sweets. Never. Well, you could read your comic book and make yourself sick. No, I don't think so. Well, you could drink too much water and need a pee. Mm. Oh, I'm OK. All right, let's get your seatbelt on and close the door. Actually, I do need a wee. Ah! My finger! Uh-oh, looks like an injury alert. So what should you do with a suspected broken finger? A, take a selfie of it and send it to your friends. B, elevate the finger and support it. Or C, stick it in a glass full of lemonade and let the bubbles soothe it. Alia, what would you do? Um, B, I would put my fingers up in the air. In fact, Alia is absolutely right. The correct answer is B. Check this out. So what are you going to do now with your broken thumb? Oh, uh, right, get it up next to that one. Put it there. Put it there. Or, if you wanted to reduce the swelling, you can put it anywhere above your heart. You put your hand up in the air, you might get tired. It still hurts. When you break bones, they bleed. You get swelling under the skin, and that's partly what hurts. If you put the hand up, less blood can get to it. And all you have to do is put your hand above your heart. Okay, your heart's where all the blood comes from. So if you, even if you just put it up there, that'll help. So, who wants to have a go? Now remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to find an adult. Ah! You've just broken my finger. So what are you going to do now? Put your hand above your heart. Ow! Ow! So what have you done then? I put my hand here yeah. so that the blood um, goes drains down. What we could do is we could use her own hood. Jasmine, do you want to see if you can put your hand in the hoodie in a way that you can then just chill out? How does that work? Does that feel better? Yeah. <laughs> so if you think you might have broken your finger, elevate it to stop it throbbing, support it and tell an adult. Right, Nazan, are you sure you don't need a wee? Nope, I've got it all sorted. <laughs> now we're getting ouch and about with our mobile clinic. Today, we're at a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. 
If you're anxious about an ailment... ..or curious about a condition... ..then the Ouchmobile is the place for you. That is incredible. Chris is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient. And Zand is out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, Chris is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is brother-sister tag team, nine-year-old Arman and Tamana, age 10. What has brought you to the Outmobile today? I've got a terrifying rotten gum. Tamana, what have you got? I think I've got a tooth on top of another. What's your double diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a rare case of terrifying rotten gum and a tooth on top of another tooth all in the same family, itis. Easy for you to say. Open wide. Now, how long have you had this problem for? As long as I live. As long as you've lived. So I don't think you've got an extra tooth. I think the tooth are crowded, so that one's being squeezed out. What can I do about it? Well, you can see a dentist is probably the best thing. OK. Right, open wide. Oh, look at that. Ouch! A bad case of tooth decay. Half your tooth is missing. So, oh, man. How long do you brush your teeth for? 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Mm. Tamana, how long does your brother... 5 to 10 seconds. 5 to 10 seconds. This could be the reason why Armand's tooth is rotten. Teeth need looking after, and that means brushing them twice a day for about two minutes. And how many times a day do you brush your teeth? Once. And how often should you brush your teeth? Um, twice. Armand's tooth will need to be taken out. But to keep the rest of his gnashes, he needs to get brushing. It can be boring, though, so any tips, Chris? Stand on one leg for a minute while you brush the bottom half of your teeth, and then you stand on the other leg for a minute while you brush the top half of your teeth. Hmm, I'm impressed. I think I'll try that myself. Away from the clinic, Zand is ouch and about in the park. Dr Zand, I have something that I need to show you. You've got bleeding under your nail, and the blood's got old, so it's gone black. That white line is how far your nail has grown since you injured it. In about four months, that'll get to the front and your nail might fall off. But then it'll grow back again, so you'll be fine. Why is it when you go upside down and roller coasters, um, does your face go red? But when you walk normally, your feet aren't red? Because you're designed to stand up, not stand on your head, there are actually valves which only allow the blood to go one direction around your body. So if the blood tries to go backwards into your feet, it can't go that direction. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's an excellent question. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's 10-year-old Alex, who's got some fascinating features on his fingers. So, Alex, what brings you to the Ouchmobile today? I've got a really weird really thing where both my little fingers are bent. What's the diagnosis, Doc? It sounds to me like a case of I've got a really weird thing where both my little fingers are bent. Itis. That's right, Chris. So what we can see here is that the last bit of the little finger on both hands is just bending in. And that's because this bone has a slightly odd shape. So instead of being flat, that's just twisted in. So do you know what this is called? Daughter phalanx deformity. Way to go, Dr Alex. We can also call it fifth finger clinodactyly. Oh, yes, the Greek forum, uh Bent little finger. Exactly. Will they ever go back to normal shape? They're never going to grow straight because the bone in the finger is a different shape on both sides, so it, it will always be bent. Now, it may be possible to have some exercises that make the things you want to do a bit easier. OK, thanks, Dr Chris. That's a pleasure. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Ouch. Let's go back to accident and emergency to meet our next patient. And you're not going to believe this one. In Liverpool accident and emergency, six-year-old Gracie has arrived with her mum and a big bandage on her finger. I've got a slipped finger. A slipped finger? It is bleeding a lot. Ah, a slit finger. Sounds like a nasty cut. I think the doctor's going to make it all better. That's right. But how did the ghastly gash happen? Well, Chris, once upon a time, in a faraway land... Uh, Liverpool, Zand. Gracie's from Liverpool. Go with it, Chris. We're in the fairy tale land of Liverpool. Um, right -o. Princess Gracie was in her castle admiring her mother's jewels. Hang on, who's that? A fairy, obviously, and she's flown off with a diamond earring. Uh, OK. And Gracie was trying to get it back when all of a sudden the earring flew under the roaring... Zan, that's an electric fire. Oh, all right, fine. 
but as she tried to retrieve the earring, her hand got stuck. Uh-oh. And when she pulled it out, her finger sliced open. Ouch. There's a bit of a cue in accident and emergency. So, while we're waiting, why don't you tell us something about yourself, Gracie? I've never been to A E before. Never been to A and E before? Well done. I've got Kia's ears. <laughs> she likes her bling. These are my plaits. They'd suit you, Zand. Oh, thank you. That's enough about you, Gracie. Time for nurse practitioner Julia Maxted to sort that cut out. Can you just bend your finger, the end, little end bit, lovely, and straighten it again? First things first, Nurse Julia needs to figure out if Gracie's cut is so deep it's damaged the insides. Oh, you're very brave. We do that to just check that the ligaments are all working. A ligament is the tissue that joins a bone to a bone. Can you feel me touching there and there? Good girl. That's quite a cut you've got there, Gracie. Yes. But the nurse is happy there's no internal damage done, so she can clean that cut and make sure there's no dirt lurking deep inside. Squeeze my hand as hard as you can. <gasps> Whoa, she's strong. <laughs> to help the cut heal and join Gracie's flesh back together, the nurse has some special paper stitches. And then we just pull the edges of your cut together. With her finger taped back together, Nurse Julia is using a high-tech bandage strap of device thingy. A what? It's just a bandage applicator, Zand. Yeah, well, it's pretty cool, though. It is. And the bandage will keep Gracie's damaged digit nice and clean. You won't be able to help with the washing up or anything like that. Oh, nice one. OK. How's that feel? OK. OK. Gracie will need to keep the tape and bandage on for three days. It feels better. Any advice for other budding princesses out there, Gracie? Be careful with your hands or this will happen. Wise words. So leave it to Mum to rescue that earring. Bye! <laughs> Sometimes things don't always heal exactly as planned, as our next patient found out. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And I'll also be out in the park answering your burning questions. That's amazing! At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is 10-year-old Anna with a funny finger. That's amazing! Seems perfectly obvious why you've come to the Ouchmobile. That's nothing. Look at my little finger. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Looks to me like a case of my little finger's even more amazing than the trick I can do with my other finger's itis. Wow. <laughs> Tell me about your little finger, Anna. It started when I was five years old. My mum told me to open the door and it, the door just, like, hit it and it cracked. Painful. Mm-hmm. So what happened then? The doctor put this um, straight thing on me to make it, like, stay straight, but it didn't work. So, Anna, I want to have a closer look at your finger. Can you open the eyelid on the ouch cam? Now, get it as straight as you can. Uh, uh, uh. That's all you can do, is it? Yeah. So the doctor used something called a splint, and the splint is meant to hold a broken bone straight until it mends. And in your case, the splint didn't work. It's nothing to worry about. Does the finger work well for you, or would you prefer to have it straightened out? It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I have to do an operation when I grow old, older. In the future, if you started to get ache in the joints or you did a job where you needed to do something very precise with your left hand, at that point, you might think about doing an operation. And it certainly is possible to straighten out that finger. Well, thank you very much for coming to the Ouchmobile. You're welcome. Time to get out of the Ouchmobile and into the park. I want to see if anyone's got any questions for me. Let's go out and about. Why does uh, your belly rumble when you're hungry? In fact, it can rumble at any time. But when you're eating, you swallow bits of air, and when you're digesting food, it actually makes gas. And the rumbling is the bubbles bubbling up through the stuff you've eaten. And the name is Boroborygmy. So the next time you're getting rumbling, you can go, oh, I've just got a bit of Boroborygmy going on. <laughs> Back at the Ouchmobile, the next case is in the waiting room. Can I have the next patient, please? It's 12-year-old Carnell with an extraordinary eye. So, Carnell, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile? Uh, when I drink, my eye sort of wanders off. What's the diagnosis, Doc? 
Sounds to me like a case of when I drink my eye sort of wanders off itis. I know what you mean. Now tell me more about that. It's called Marcus Gunn syndrome. Now that is a very, very rare syndrome indeed. So in all the things ever published about medicine, there are only 300 people reported to have had it. Can you open the eye on the ouch cam? Now, can you give us a demonstration of what happens? I can't see it. Now, can you try wiggling your jaw from side to side like that? It's not easy to see, but Carnell's eyelid is twitching from side to side. That's because the bit of his brain that's making his jaw move is also telling his eyelid to move. And does it affect your life at all? No, not really, because not much people notice it. As a doctor, it is very interesting to see someone with a syndrome this rare. Carnell, thank you very much for coming and showing us your amazing eye in the Ouchmobile. It's OK, thank you, Dr Zan. Job done for today. Clinic closed.